Tonight, I talked to Russell Ricaldi. He is the owner of ITAC Services here in the Tampa Bay area. He is a retired federal agent with more than 25 years of experience. He was also a special response team leader for Homeland Security. He also worked narcotics for housing and urban development, and he provided security for diplomats under the State Department. So Russ, in light of what we saw in Sacramento, explain to us, are police officers trained to shoot first? Absolutely not. Police officers are never trained to shoot first. The way police officers and federal agents and all people in law enforcement are trained, there's, there's what's known as a use of force continuum. Everything from officer presence, just the fact that you're there to do a job, all the way up to and including deadly force. And there's a bunch of steps in between there. Okay, describe those steps. Okay, so one thing would be verbal commands. So I come upon a scene as either in plain clothes or in uniform, somebody's doing something, I give them a command. Please slowly show me your hands. That would be a level of force. They don't comply. Maybe I ask them again. Maybe now I have to put my hands on them and softly get them to comply. That would be a next step up. Then there's something called intermediate weapons all the way up to and including deadly force. So how do you gauge if someone has a weapon? This, these are split-second decisions. I think that's the thing that the public doesn't take into consideration enough when they're, when they're Monday morning quarterbacking these, these events that happen. They do happen in split seconds, but not only that, environmental conditions and the conditions of the particular incident. What did the officers know upon arriving at that incident to make that split-second decision? What was the call for? Was it for a murder? Was it for a kitty in a tree? What was it? That's all gonna play into how quickly they have to make those decisions. We are hearing from the public, from some, that feel like there's this bias within police departments. We're talking specifically racism. You've worked in multiple departments. What have you seen? I've had the luxury of working with many, many different police departments as a federal agent, working on the street with local law enforcement. And I can tell you only from my point of view, that I have not seen that type of, of rampant racism and bias towards any particular group or color. And all of those elements are taken into account when an officer is investigated for either disciplinary or criminal charges.